He said, well, what do you like? And I said, well, really commercial things. He said, by contracts. I said, yes. Contracts are simple, you know. I do this and you do that and there's the deal. <laughs> so look, he sat back in his chair and he said to me in French, le choix de la loi applicable en matière de l'arbitrage commercial international. And I sort of put my pigeon French. And then I said, what's arbitrage? <laughs> <laughs> he said, go look it up. And that's where it started. You wanna, what do you think the challenges are today compared to when you got into arbitration? Well, I, I mean, the, the, I think when I, when I hear such experience, I would say, you know, I cannot really pr project myself in the past, but when I hear what you're saying, I think one thing is very clear, is that you took what you liked and you adapted it to uh, your career. And I think this is something that, uh, uh, because you were talking about the mentor, and I think, um, you know, the mentor, first of all, you have to decide what you want to do and what applies to you as a, as a as what is your project. And something which I did, uh, I have to say, uh, and I, I, would, uh, I would recommend it, at least for the sake of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the argument, would be to project yourself in 10 years or 15 years from now. Arbitration is quite a small family. Uh, you see around this table we have so many connections one way or another and it's because arbitration, while it is quite a hot topic and very developed already, it is not as um, developed as per se in litigation in your own countries. So when it comes down to it, international arbitration still is one circle and while we're working on expanding it, it will take the time. So what is the challenge with that? There are only so many opportunities out there, there's only so many positions. Um, everyone has what they have to offer, and the, problem, and the issue is to be able to display it. So I agree, you have to be able to show your substance, show to those people out there what you can offer to them. Um, as part of the MA, we do always tell you, come on, come enjoy the social networking, professional networking, go to the moot bars, and I am 100% behind that. But at the same time, because it is such a small community, while we say, yes, you should have your fun, you should also be cognizant of the fact that what you do and what you say to one person, if it hits the wrong way, it can indeed travel fast in the community. Give the first step to obtain the first job in international arbitration, especially if you are pursuing a job outside your home jurisdiction. And I'm not here to discourage you. I will try to convince you that you should try hard harder than you probably expected. In 2012, I moved to London, and I was lucky to have classes with Professor Lou and Professor Kroll in Queen Mary, University of London. And during the LLM, I realized it would be important to stay longer in London to gain some international experience. I, I went uh, to the careers office in in the university, and uh, they gave me a book called Lex 100, which lists the top 100 firms in, in the UK. I sent my CV to all the law firms there that had an arbitration practice. So I was reviewing the profile of the lawyers on the website, checking whether they had experience at cases in Latin America, and drafting introduction letters tailor-made to each law firm. After I ticked all the, the law firms in the book, I had a few potential interviews, but nothing concrete. So I went back to Queen Mary, and they gave me a book with the top 250 <laughs> US law firms. <laughs> in short, I sent my CV to 119 law firms in London. <coughs> And when I compare that to my friends in the LLM, they sent the CVs to 10, 15 law firms maybe. They, find, they found it too burdensome, too stressful to go through that process and they gave up and came back, to, uh, went back to their home jurisdiction. So I think luck plays a major role. It is important to be in the right time, at the right time, at the right, at the right place. But I also believe that we can increase our luck if we try harder than our competitors. You need a basic skill. I think you can go and join a law firm and can be an intellectual property lawyer. You can go and join a law firm and you can work in, in, in litigation generally. If you've got those skills of private international law and comparative law and the open mind that's necessary, then I think when the opportunities come into a firm, of an international arbitration, you're well suited to deal with it, even if it's something you've never dealt with before.
What makes the difference between a great sportsman, whether that be a tennis player or a football player or um, any other sport you want, or, 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 or an athlete, the difference between the great and the real greats. The great is natural. These top players don't, don't become there because you know, they're nice guys. They get there because they've been given this, God give, this gift that they've got. And what do they do with it? They work it. They train. They practice. They get in there and really profound that skill. And that makes the difference between these two great tennis players, fantastic tennis players, and the one who goes up to the top and the one who's always just below the top. And I think that's the same with a lawyer. You've got to get in and become an expert in something, and then if you've got that arbitration skill and you profound it, then I think that there's the possibility, provided you have that luck as well, to get the cases. And I'll leave you another thought. When you look at something as a lawyer or as an arbitrator, Stefan and I would sit as arbitrators and others. Why should anybody appoint me? Why should they appoint him? Yeah, we're very good. He's, he's excellent. Um, <laughs> but why? Because we know how good and how many outstanding people there are like that. And we both had the opportunity to work with people of that sort and to sit as arbitrators with them. But that's the standard. If you think I've got it all, you're wrong. Look at those other people. And that's the level you want to make sure you're in that level with them. And that is basically down to hard work and then the lack of getting, getting them. Do you think that the best, one of the elements is to try to qualify as a lawyer? Do you think they should try to work in a law firm? Do you think that they should try to work in an international law firm? after applying uh, at 200 law firms, 1,000 law firms. Uh, in your experience, because you were at JIT before, and now you're a part of the jean -Tip. Well, I mean, it's very simple. When I finished my PhD, I thought, um, especially because it, you know people were telling me it was a very good PhD, and I had been doing all these internships before, and I mean, I really thought it would be red carpet, <laughs> like a sub. I mean, I thought, you know, I would, I would uh, apply, and people would say, well, of course, this is fantastic. And, you know, of course, we take it with us, I mean, obviously. Well, it didn't happen uh, at all. Uh, and actually, the first question I was asked every single time I was having an interview was, oh, and uh, you're qualified, uh, where are you qualified again? Well, I was not qualified because I had just finished my PhD. And obviously, so pe people were saying, yeah, great experience, great PhD, but you know, this is a law firm. I mean, yeah, of course, you're not going to work in this jurisdiction, but we want you to be qualified somewhere. So in, in my very specific case, there was no way I would work for a law firm uh, without being qualified. And that makes a good team, change it, or distinguish a good team from an excellent team. You have a tiny issue which has no real commercial value. And then you have a big issue. And when you have just teams concentrating on the tiny issue without going to the big issue, you say, okay, they have a legal issue there, but they didn't understand the commercial underlying reality. And there's always a commercial thing behind that. So it's always good to have some in-house experience if you don't get it yourself, marry one. <laughs> and I could only encourage young uh, lawyers to actually not focus only on professional life. I mean, there is a, a life out there which is, uh, of course, uh, to my eyes, much more important uh, than the professional life. And you adapt professional life to the actual life. Honest, uh, perseverance, dedication, uh, you, you know your abilities. It's not something that somebody else can tell you. You have to be able to judge what you can or cannot do. You just have to keep, just keep going on. If there's that goal that you want, don't give up. You will get to where you should be one way or another, as long as you keep trying. <laughs> Try harder than your competitors. <laughs> I'll say something before Julia, um, and I'll go back to what I said in the beginning. Everything that happens is a journey, and you are adding the elements or the bricks. You are building your house on the way, and people around you are extremely important. You have to treat them well, because they will treat you well. I wish everybody here good fortune if that's what you decide to do. But let me say this, the legal world, I've been, in, been a lawyer for a long time, I've enjoyed every year, every, all my time as a lawyer. I've had lots of stress, I've had big cases and small cases, and like every, every other experienced lawyer. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. But what I hear, and here I agree with everybody else, 
it's getting into the legal profession when you cease being a student it's going to work for a law firm working in industry working in government service whether you become an academic all of these are wonderful careers and if it's something that you enjoy and something that gives you the passion that you want don't believe that arbitration is the only area that there is in the legal world there are many many areas and i think that um, the opportunity here for all of you to meet like-minded people from different countries around the world and you share ideas and you share ambitions and you share concerns and you share maybe disappointments that in itself is part of that growing world and I just wish all of you great fortune for the future. Do something that you want to be good at many times and many different types of experiences but the other half is exactly what Julian just said. You have to really like it because you will never be good at something that you don't like and you really don't want to get trapped in a, in a career trap that you don't like. Be open-minded. I think you'll find when you speak to people that many people have ended up with where they are often on a banana peel <laughs> that they didn't plan it. I agree you should plan but you should be open to new experiences and to underscore what everyone has been saying. Uh, your net worth is your network <laughs> and here you are the fact that you are taking time today to be here shows that you are already taking a really important steps towards growing your network growing the information you have be open-minded and always remember intelligence and ambition and collegiality knows no national borders doesn't matter where you come from you can be part of this see you here back next year well, I don't know if me, but I'm sure that Dino Farb and Ike, and I'm sure that Jean-Pet will be here, and I'm sure that you will be here next year. Thank you very much. <laughs>